Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on how can cities develop indicators to assess impacts of nature-based solutions. I am Dr. Adina Dumitru. I am a senior researcher and director of the Sustainability Specialization Campus at the University of A Coruña, located in the region of Galicia in Spain. At the Sustainability Specialization Campus, we are passionate about helping cities to assess progress towards sustainable development goals. As part of the Connecting Nature project, I work with colleagues from other universities and with city partners to develop an impact assessment framework for nature-based solutions. Although the topic of impact assessment can sometimes feel daunting and dry, I hope that this webinar will show you that it can be an exciting adventure as well as an opportunity to convince stakeholders of the real benefits of nature-based solutions in tackling contemporary challenges. Myself and project partners from the Frontrunner City of Glasgow will present the process by which we developed indicators, hoping it will support you in choosing the right one for your city. So why do we need an impact assessment framework for nature-based solutions? Nature-based solutions have the potential to address current environmental, social and economic challenges in cities, but systematic assessment of these impacts are still missing. Building a solid evidence base on the outcomes of nature-based solutions, or NBS, will help cities to design cost-effective, multifunctional nature-based interventions, to harness investment and public support for them, to upscale and outscale them and to transform the way we think and plan our cities by making them a mainstream aspect of policy. Three principles guided our efforts. Indicators had to be based on state-of-the-art scientific evidence. They had to rely on lessons learned from previous experiences with NBS across Europe and be adaptable to each city's objectives and local context. To put these principles into practice, we designed an iterative co-production process that involved extensive reviews of scientific literature, a systematic process of indicated development and rounds of consultations with the frontrunner cities of Glasgow in Scotland, Genk in Belgium and Poznan in Poland. Together with colleagues at the University of East London, Humboldt University in Berlin and Trinity College Dublin, we focused on four categories of impacts, broadly defined as climate change adaptation and resilience, health and well-being, social cohesion, and nature-based economic development and entrepreneurship. In taking stock of the available scientific evidence, the following principles emerged as essential in the development of a robust impact assessment plans. These plans should evaluate benefits across multiple impact categories. Existing evaluations often focus on a primary objective such as flood mitigation, or air temperature reduction and miss the opportunity to capture their additional impacts on health, community and economic prosperity. Plans would also benefit from systematically considering the intermediary mechanisms through which nature-based solutions influence certain outcomes, especially those related to health and social cohesion. Furthermore, the long-term performance of nature-based solutions and their cumulative effects is not yet well understood. Both short and long-term evaluations should be implemented to support more sophisticated and effective interventions. There is insufficient knowledge on how nature-based solutions affect different social groups. Evaluation plans should thus include the systematic mapping of actual use and experience with NVS of different social groups, which is a highly relevant dimension for social justice. Finally, the process of NVS design and implementation is likely to have an impact on how the intervention is used and experienced in a word on its performance. 
but an understanding of this relationship is missing. So plans should include process indicators and differentiate them from outcome indicators. Our review led to a comprehensive list of over 100 indicators for the four categories of impact mentioned. However, it is impractical to think that cities could effectively implement such a large set due to limitations in financial and human resources. Through a systematic process, we then worked with the cities to select a smaller core set of indicators that were both relevant and implementable across the different nature-based solutions of our frontrunner cities. To make sure our final selection was appropriate for cities' objectives, we developed and tested, together with the City of Glasgow, a structured tool to support the process of thinking about assessment. The IEP, standing for Impact Assessment Planning Tool, guides cities through a reflexive process. They defined how a particular nature-based solution addressed the city's key strategic objectives and how it aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, listed specific actions to be carried out and expected impacts of those actions, described the geographical and temporal scale of each impact, process characteristics and especially plans for public engagement, and reflected on the desired outcomes for different social groups affected by the particular nature-based solution, the barriers to reaching those outcomes and the potential unintended effects of a nature-based solution. Through this systematic process, we were able to select a set of indicators that could fit each city's strategic objectives and align with sustainable development goals. The core indicators we selected are thus highly supported by existing scientific evidence and together they form a robust impact assessment framework with the potential to demonstrate the multifunctional character of nature-based solutions. We are now working on turning this tool into a digitally supported system that will guide cities and policymakers through this staged, specifically designed process from structured reflection on NBS impacts to choosing appropriate indicators, developing and implementing a data plan, to finally integrate evidence into the policy process at city level. This tool will support cities in developing robust monitoring and evaluation plans and co-create the story of their MBS, a story supported by evidence. This process has also been turned into a training program for our seven Connecting Nature Fast Follower Cities together with our frontrunner cities who now have extensive experience in developing monitoring and evaluation plans, we transfer lessons learned to other cities on how to co-create impact assessment frameworks and choose indicators that fit their local context by working with relevant stakeholders to build a common vision for urban transformation through NBS. Turning our attention to the selected indicators now, we first included two indicators to map how different social groups use and experience NBS. The type, frequency and duration of NBS use and the perceived quality of NBS. For the environmental impacts, we cover the diversity of impact categories, such as, for example, the distribution and connectivity of public green and blue space in the city, the cultural and recreational values of blue-green spaces, reductions in air temperature and flood risks, biodiversity conservation, and water quality improvement. For health and well-being, we chose indicators that reflect important antecedents of many illnesses, such as prevalence, incidence and morbidity of chronic stress or levels of physical activity, but also health outcomes such as prevalence, incidence, morbidity and mortality of cardiovascular disease or life expectancy, and mental health indicators such as general well-being and happiness, rates of depression and anxiety, 
and levels of aggressiveness and violence. In terms of social indicators, we included those reflecting social cohesion, defined as the quality of relationships and community life, which includes things like social capital, trust, solidarity, tolerance and respect between neighbors, orientation towards the common good or actual and perceived safety, social justice with geographical and perceived access to NBS, or empowerment conceptualized as perceived control and influence over NBS decision making, place attachment, and those relating to the potential of NBS to promote a more environmentally educated citizenship with pro-environmental attitudes and a pro-environmental identity. And finally, for economic indicators, we included new businesses attracted or started and net additional jobs, increase in tourism, both local and international, affordable and clean energy, estimated financial cost of flooding, and additional non-market funding secured for NBS. Fact sheets were developed with key information on each of these indicators, and the next stage will entail the choice of monitoring and evaluation procedures, as well as their implementation. We will be happy to share these, as well as the results of our impact assessments at a later stage. Thank you for listening to my part of the webinar. Over to Gillian and Laura from the city of Glasgow. Thank you.